Tempe, I have bad news. The tree says we're not allowed in, so it's going to take a little while. Okay, is that okay? Coming for you next. I feel like I've been holding my breath all year waiting for this moment and now that it's come all I want to do is take the happiness that I'm feeling and send it outwards to all of you. There's something so potent about the summer solstice and lately I've been thinking a lot about the ancient cultural ties people have with celebrating the seasons and celebrating the earth. And I've been wondering, when did that all disappear? And why? That's a rhetorical question, by the way. Maybe we're in this mess because this way of life has been scrubbed from much of our collective consciousness. Our celebrations have been made into rituals of upholding the lies of consumerism, colonialism, and the exploitation of this planet rather than receiving the bounties of the earth itself and directly honoring our ties to community. At one point, this was the way the entire world lived. Seasonal rituals and celebrations were a center point to most if not all cultures across the world before the spread of colonialism and institutionalized religion. I can't get this thought out of my head. But before I tell you more about this and share what I did for this year's summer solstice, I have to share something else that's been weighing heavily on me for the last year in particular. I feel I need to share this because I don't think I can talk about how important our intrinsic human connection to this earth is without talking about the damage the systems we are unconsciously partaking in and upholding are inflicting upon it. This does end with a positive note though, I promise. So, the more in tune I've become with living according to the seasons, the more I've learned to see what's happening to this land. How it's been often neglected and disrespected. Just one example is the issue of invasive species. Invasive species have been here for as long as this land has been colonized, and I realize that it may be ironic for me, a white person, to be talking about invasive species. But that's not my point. Because there are so many introduced alien species on this land, our ecosystems are suffering because of it, and I want to briefly mention two in particular because I live with the damage that they inflict. If you live in North America as well, chances are you've heard of European buckthorn. And gypsy moth. 
And if you're someone who spends time in the outdoors like me, maybe you've also seen what they can do to a landscape. Buckthorn, for example, creates monocultures of itself and it spreads prolifically. It was brought to North America by European settlers largely to create hedgerows for their farms because it's what they did back home, it's what they knew. But what's striking to me about this is that nobody bothered to learn about how the people indigenous to this land cared for and thrived with it. And still to this day we are suffering the consequences, often at scales that most people don't recognize. Where I grew up, buckthorn is so pervasive that it stretches for as far as the eye can see choking out all native trees and vegetation, erasing the possibility for biodiversity and a thriving ecosystem. Nothing can really live there, and the implications of this are too far-reaching for me to explain at this particular moment. And the gypsy moth. This year is the worst year in my province's history for the damage that this caterpillar has inflicted on our forests. Entire forests are being defoliated. It's the middle of the summer and there are trees that have been stripped completely bare. It's haunting to look at and concerning to think about what it might mean for the future. With rising temperatures, many insect populations are exploding to unnatural levels. They're no longer dying over the winter in order to control the population for the next season because our winters have been becoming increasingly more mild and they're spreading farther and farther north. So much of our societal attitudes and economic models ignore concepts of valuable ecosystem services that we all rely on, whether we realize it or not. And invasive species are a threat to this. I wish I knew from experience more about the seasonal rituals and celebrations of the people who took care of this land for thousands of years. At this moment in time, I can only speak to my personal experiences in honoring this land and recognizing the importance of seasonal awareness. For the last handful of years, I've been celebrating the Latvian summer solstice with my boyfriend's family. It's called Jani, and it's my favorite holiday out of the entire year. The Latvians were one of the very last pagan groups left in Europe, and much of their ancient culture lives on to this day. Janyi being just one example of this. The traditional form of the celebration goes something like this. People gather in the countryside or forests. They partake in ancient folk traditions as they relate to renewal and fertility. Feasting. Singing. <laughs> dancing, finding the elusive fern flower. People stay awake from sunup to sunup, usually drinking the entire time. The women gather grasses and flowers from the meadows to make flower crowns, called avanyaks, and the men wear wreaths of oak. It's important to wear your vanyaks for the entire night keep it for the rest of the year and then burn it in next year's Ligua fire for good luck and fortune. They light massive bonfires that burn throughout the night, at times jumping over them, and when the next sunrise comes they clean their faces with the fresh dew that gathers on the grass in the fields. Last Yanyi I learned how to play the kukla, a traditional Latvian instrument, and so I thought it would be fitting to play it this year and enjoy how far I've come in learning how to play. I spent a lot of time listening to the birds in the forest.
picking medicinal berries. Sitting by the water and I forced myself to work through my fear of open water and swim in the lake by myself. I'm convinced that sea monsters are real, by the way. <laughs> There's something you feel that is beyond words when you live your life in a way that respects the natural world. And actually, I used to be afraid, and I still kind of am, that speaking in this way would make me sound weird or like an extremist of some sort, but how crazy is that? I also find it so interesting that across many different cultures and different parts of the world, people have associated celebrations of life, renewal, light, and power with worshipping goddesses or the feminine spirit. I think that it's no coincidence that through the erasure of land-based living, land-based celebrations, and cultures that didn't adhere to institutionalized religion, so too did inherent respect for women and respect for this earth fade away. I think it's about time we really brought it all back. Mm -hmm.